meeting of the Historical Board of Aldermen will now come to order. Please rise for the saying of the Pledge of Allegiance to be followed by a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, you have before you a copy of the modified written agenda, and the city clerk just passed uh, a proposed amendment to the claims docket uh, to you, which actually, right now, the claims docket is not on consent. Uh, in the event that it does not go on consent, then we can just take that up at the time we discuss the claims docket. If somebody puts that on consent, please put this amendment uh, on consent with the, with the claims docket. So. Alderman Dewey. I'd like to place um, item four, approval of Board of Aldermen's minutes to the uh, consent agenda. With correction. All right. Oh, they were correct. And are these correct as written. have been reduced yeah, writing by city reduced attorney one? All right. Alderman Dewey's proposed, proposed revision is to place the approval of the minutes from the October 4th, 2011 minutes with corrections as were reduced to writing by the city attorney on the consent agenda. Alderman Dumas, is that your proposed revision? It is. Uh, any objection? Any objection? <coughs> any objection? Any objection? Seeing none, that matter has been placed on the consent agenda. Alderman Dumas, do you have further proposed revision? Uh, under board business, item D, unless there's uh, interest from others on the board about anything that's not shown in the packet, I'd like that to go on consent. No. no. There's right, no, yeah, there's no consideration, the but oh, this is advertising for okay. All right, so the propo the hmm? proposed revision, no, uh, no item D, 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 the presentation. Item D, I thought you said B. Yeah. Okay, so item D. There's no approval needed. It's just a presentation. But but we, 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 we previously approved. The, yes. the light right. to go up, so we need to rescind, rescind that. that if that's what you want to do. Well, let's take that off, and we'll talk about that. Okay. Further proposed revision. Item E, RFQ for uh, redistricting to consent. That's the one at the table. Tell me it's the one at the table. And that's the one at the table, the one with the modification. That's right. The most recent version right. Uh, right. published at the table. So Alderman Dumas's proposed revision is to place the approval of an RFQ for the advertisement of a consultant in order to redistrict the city of Stark required by the 2010 census population data. Uh, as presented uh, in, in the most recent copy placed on the table, on the consent agenda. Alderman Dumas, is that your proposed revision? It is. Any objections? Do I hear any objections? What was the modification? Uh, what Took off the, the um, uh, there was a sentence. Uh, let me tell them what it is. Uh, it was a sentence that indicated that the consultant selected would work with the board members. Any objection? Any objection? Any no. objection? Any objection saying none? That matter has been placed on the consent no, agenda. Oh, oh, do you object? No, I'm not. I just this, that sentence was taken off. Yes. Can you say that again? It was a, a sentence that basically said that the consultant selected would, would uh, be willing to work with the board members. So we don't want him. Why don't we want him willing to work with board members? No, it's, it's implied that he would be working with board members. It was superfluous to state it was was the consultant who provided. To so he will be willing to work with board members. Oh yes, yes. It would be implied in the in the selection. Okay. Who will <coughs> select? Who will select the consultant? Does it still say that the board will select the consultant? That is an action that the board would have to make. Okay. Any, any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Seeing none, that matter has been placed on the consent agenda. Further proposed revision. Under board business item F, to consent. And do you want to address the corresponding I public do. appearance? I'd like to strike the public appearance. All right. Proposed revision from Alderman Dumas is to place item F under board business, the approval of a special event request for the City of Starville Christmas Parade uh, on November 28, 2011, as presented on the consent agenda, and to remove the corresponding public appearance 
which was the only scheduled public appearance tonight by Jennifer Gregory from the agenda. Alderman Dubin, is that your proposed revision? It is. Any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Saying none. That matter has been placed on consent and the public appearance has been stricken from the agenda. Alderman Dubin, do you have further proposed revision? I do. Under Office of City of Clerk, um, item one to consent with the modified um, budget as presented at the board, or at the, at the table. All right, Alderman Dumas's proposed revision is to place item 11C1, the approval of the City of Starkville claims docket for all departments except the fire department <coughs> as of November 10th, 2011, with the modification as presented at this, evening, at this evening's meeting by the City Clerk on the consent agenda. Alderman Dumas, is that your proposed revision? It is. Any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Seeing none, that matter has been placed on the consent agenda. Alderman Dumas, you have further proposed revisions? I do. Um, item F. One, consideration requesting for bids for the Louisville Street Widening Project to consent. All right. Proposed revision from Alderman Dumas is to place the acceptance of... You have language? Yeah, the city attorney's raised a question that that project um, is over the original budget by $106,000. Uh, so that, that, that may give rise to a need for a discussion so the board can determine uh, how that will be funded. Well, I'll pull that from consent. Okay. Further proposed revision. Final one, under public service, item I, to consent. <coughs> I'm going to request that not be put on consent as I'll need to recuse myself on that item. Okay. That will remain on the regular agenda. Do we have any further proposed revisions? Any further proposed revisions to the agenda? Any further proposed revisions? Any further proposed revisions? Seeing none, a motion to approve the agenda as revised is in order. So moved. Motion has been made by Alderman Corey to approve the agenda as revised. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Dumas. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Measure clearly passes. You now have before you the consideration of the approval of the consent agenda. Is there any objection to the approval of the consent agenda as revised? Any objection to the approval of the consent agenda as revised? Any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Seeing none, that measure passes. That will take us to comments by the mayor and the board. I have a couple of comments before I get into our new employee introduction and our uh, retiree uh, recognition tonight. Uh, first, I'd like to remind everybody that we are scheduled for a work session next Tuesday night, and that will be to discuss uh, the capital improvement plan and uh, potential starting points for uh, municipal complex. Uh, it is my hope, although I have not received confirmation from him yet, that we will have Demery Grubbs uh, to carry us through the next step of the capital improvement plan uh, at that meeting. Yeah. If you recall, the last phase of that process, uh, you all worked to prioritize uh, needs that you uh, previously identified, uh, and he has been working to aggregate uh, those needs, and we'll, we'll be coming in uh, for a presentation on that, and we'll have next steps for us. Uh, I also hope to have a presentation from Taylor Adams, uh, who is a local citizen well-versed in public-private partnerships uh, to talk about potential possibilities uh, for public-private partnerships in meeting municipal facility uh, needs. Uh, so that would be the order for the work session uh, next Tuesday night. And uh, I'd also like to announce that uh, there will be a blood drive uh, held next Monday and Tuesday uh, from 11.30 to 6.30 p.m., uh, both days, at the Sportsplex. Uh, this blood drive will be specifically uh, for the purpose of uh, uh, getting blood for Ken Honeycutt. Uh, Ken Honeycutt, as many of you are aware, uh, is a, a city employee who was in, injured in a hunting accident uh, last week uh, and is in need of blood. So anybody, if you are so moved, uh, please uh, come to the Sportsplex and uh, give blood uh, for Ken's sake on Monday and Tuesday of next week. I uh, would now like to introduce uh, our newest employee. Our newest uh, city employee is Chris Pulliam. Uh,
the city of Starkville would like to introduce Chris Pulliam as the new engineering aide at Starkville Electric. Chris is originally from Artesia, Mississippi, but has lived in Starkville for the past eight years. He is a graduate of West Lowndes High School in Columbus and attended Northeast Mississippi Community College in Boonville, as well as the University of Southern Mississippi, where he received his Bachelor of Science degree in Architectural Design and Technology. Before joining the city of Starkville, Chris spent the past 12 years as a project man manager at Schaefer & Associates. Chris and his wife, Mashallah, have three sons, Devin, Ethan, and Kylan, and they attend Zion Gate Missionary Baptist Church in Columbus. In his spare time, Chris enjoys sports, and, the vice president of, and, and he is the vice president of ambassadors of the, Star of the Greater Starkville Development Partnership. Please join me in welcoming Chris Pulliam to the city of Starkville. And I now have the honor of recognizing two longtime members of the city workforce who are moving on. <coughs> uh, I'd first like to recognize John Hendricks. And I'll read the plaque that has been prepared for Mr. Hendricks. It says, The City of Starkville, Mississippi. A certificate of appreciation presented to John Henry in recognition of his many years of loyal and dedicated service to the city of Starkville, Mississippi, from February 25th, 1983 to November 3rd, 2011. Please join me in congratulating John for his outstanding service to the city of Starkville. <laughs> it is now my pleasure to recognize Thomas G. Gray, and I will read uh, from the plaque that has been prepared for Mr. Gray. City of Starkville, Mississippi, Certificate of Appreciation presented to Thomas G. Gray in recognition of his many years of loyal and dedicated service to the City of Starkville, Mississippi from October 1st, 1991. September 30th, 2011. Please join me in congratulating Mr. Include my comments uh, for this evening. Do we have any comments from the members of the board? Alderman Perkins. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, there was one oversight from the last meeting, but I would be remiss if I didn't say it now. A couple things I want to say. I want to commend uh, the uh, citizens who have uh, served in the past on the uh, beautification committee. We saw an article in the local newspaper about uh, a number of our citizens who resigned for various reasons. I know Mr. Milo Barnum is here tonight, and I think I have a constituent, or maybe more than one, but name comes out, Ms. Jane Loveless. But they did an exemplary job working for the, uh, for the Beautification Committee. I know we have other uh, citizens. We're proud of all of the people uh, who, who volunteer their time on boards and commissions. But I just wanted to, to bring that to the forefront because that was in the paper that <coughs> drew some attention. So uh, I did not want that to go unnoticed, and, um, and, and, and these uh, individuals, and among others, have just worked so diligently, and we want to commend them for their tireless efforts and for their faithful uh, and dedicated service. Secondly, and finally, under the comment section tonight, uh, we are going, as the mayor mentioned, have the, um, the work session for capital improvements next Tuesday night. And I'm hoping that that work session will be a productive one. Um, as we all know that our time is so, um, uh, so valuable, and I'm hoping that there will be something that will be beneficial uh, to this body. Um, you know, we have talked about capital improvements over and over again. And, and personally, you know, and of course this is just my opinion, 
I feel that it's a waste of time, and I'm not trying to convince anybody at the table, I'm just talking to the public, uh, to bring this, uh, this consultant in for him, to, an outsider, to tell us what we need to do in the city. Uh, you know, we already know what the capital improvements are. Uh, we have a plan that's been adopted, it's already in place. The question is, is where we're going to get the money from to fund these capital improvements. Um, you know, of course, we do have some money. So, um, and hopefully something worthwhile will come out of that session. But, you know, this is, we just have a lot of talk about capital improvements. And these are things we often talk about during the board meeting. So, um, so I, I don't know what um, the consultant is going to tell us that we don't already know. So, you know, it's just a matter of trying to implement and, and do some of these things that, that are worthy. So, you know, of course, tonight there are a couple of uh, a capital improvement projects that we'll be talking about. And so, um, but I just wanted to make those comments and hopefully, um, you know, something productive come out of more than just an assembly, more than just a gathering, more than just something to say that we're here and, um, and just uh, uh, assemble for a particular purpose. And that's all I have for right now, Mr. Mayor. We have further comments from the members of the board. Alderman Parker. Uh, Mayor, I'd like to announce that uh, the the engineers have uh, on the South South Montgomery uh, traffic study. They've come, they have they now have some preliminary findings, and we're going to be having a uh, public meeting on December the fifth. Uh, that is a Monday night, so it's December the fifth at five thirty at the Sportsplex in the upstairs uh, meeting room. And this, this will be a, a presentation by the uh, engineering firm on their preliminary findings and an opportunity for the public to have uh, public input on the project as we progress through the project. So I wanted to make that announcement on December the 5th. We'll be having that public meeting. Time. 530. <coughs> Further comments from the members? <coughs> Alderman Vaughn. Uh, I'd like to say thank you for the trip that we allowed to make to Phoenix. It was success and it could be much better, you know, if we would have been able to participate in the things that we went there for. But we did learn something and thank for that. And secondly, I, I challenge the mayor and the board to adopt an attitude of love for, for all peoples, especially the city of Starville. And I say that because I, I see we constantly make an audience and we constantly amend an audience. And, and some of the orders that we make, I don't see where they we're profiting anything, nothing, nothing gaining from some of these orders that we're making. And I see if orders coming up now would want to amend one to stop people from doing such things is is peddling and going on. Some of these people don't have jobs, so what do we expect for them to do? We don't want to rob and steal, and we don't want to break them in. So if a man can't feed his family, he's gonna do whatever it takes to feed his family. And, and as the city of Starvey, I can't see why we want to hinder someone from trying to provide for his family. And, 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 and these owners not bringing no, all these owners that we developing, not bringing no revenue in. And, and I think the thing what we should be looking for, for try to find some jobs to bring in the city of Starville instead of creating all these owners that with no profit that benefit the city of Starville, no bringing no revenue in. But I think that's what we need to develop a love. If we develop an attitude of love towards the city of Starville, I believe that as the city of Starville, it's this board, this mayor and this board developed the attitude of love. The department here can do nothing but follow us and do the right thing for the city of Starville. I believe that from the depths of my heart. We have further comments from the members of the board. Any further comments from the members of the board? Any further comments? Seeing none, we'll move to citizen comments, and at this time, any citizen wishing to make uh, comments may do so by coming forward, introducing yourself, and you'll be recognized to speak for a maximum of three minutes. Greetings to the main board. My name is Alvin Turner Ward, 7. I uh, want to recognize the Vice Mayor of Trump and Alderman Vaughn. Thank you, Alvin. The citizens, now we, now we have some very strong um, problems that are, uh, uh, will be dealt with. And the, um, but our, uh, on, on a lot of note, we, um, North Lane, we, we have a church van 
that have to pick up people and that they have problems turning around is kind of congested. Uh, at 220 North uh, Jackson Street, we we have a, a dip off that need to be checked. Um, with the striping and everything that's on Jefferson Street, I mean on North Jackson Street, uh, uh, it's confusing to drive. We have stripes and stuff. We don't know uh, uh, how much of a uh, leeway the uh, uh, a pedestrian have or the uh, vehicle have. We just see a lot of stripes. Uh, uh, that is something that we need to uh, uh, bring to the uh, citizen attention on what is what is what. Also, um, we were very uh, disturbed at the way that the election 26 went uh, uh, last week. Um, it was very disturbing that uh, 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 you know it's very dangerous to play God. Uh, we uh, wanted what you meant about our uh, person identifying the person. Our, uh, and we also were disturbed about our, uh, uh, a lot of ladies, our, uh, they, they worried about uh, incest and rape, our, uh, taking a lot of rights from them. And we also our, uh, were disturbed about the uh, image domain, uh, the lawyers and the police be very busy uh, people don't like for to be intimidated. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Turner. Mr. Mayor, can I ask Mr. Turner one question? Mr. Mr. Turner, you say on Jackson Street the stripe, and you're talking about 389? Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, what's confusing? And I'm, that's, yeah, a friend, we, that's a friendly question. Uh, let, cause, cause got, I, I go that way every day. Uh, we, got, we got stripes. We got, we got the three, you know, the three where you have to do it. You put the bikes and then you got the, the, the yellow line didn't get. Yeah, uh, that was done by the highway department, but but I just wanted to follow up on that. But you know, the way it's done is no different than it was just asphalt. They just came back and restriped it. So they didn't take anything away though. Okay. okay. But but no, I, I just want to ask, it's a friendly uh, question. Yeah, well, I, well, the people just want to know. Yes, sir, that, yes, sir. That, that, and we appreciate you. And I just wanted to ask, thank you, Mr. Turner. Okay. We appreciate you so much. Do we have any further citizen comments? Any further citizen comments? Any further citizen comments? Seeing none, uh, our previously scheduled public appearance was canceled, so we'll move into our second public hearing on amending the uh, historical code of ordinance in Appendix B to include subdivision regulations in Chapter 98 to include references to all street specifications contained in <laughs> Appendix B. Uh, if you are following in your agenda, you will notice the action item that was previously scheduled tonight has been deleted. Uh, the reason that item has been deleted is uh, I have received a legal opinion uh, from our city attorney that uh, since this matter involves a change to our subdivision regulations, uh, we are required by state statute uh, to uh, serve written notice in the newspaper of any potential change. Yeah. So uh, what will happen after tonight's uh, second public hearing, uh, the board policy of having two public hearings will have been satisfied. And uh, we will then legal no legally notice this matter so that under state statute, the board can properly consider this at the, at the next board meeting. Uh, but we'll go ahead and have the second public hearing on the matter tonight. Chris, would you like to speak to that? And, and there will need to be the opportunity for anybody to be heard at the next meeting who wants to speak on this issue. We can go ahead and have a third public hearing if you, you think that's the best approach. That'd be the safest. Right? Okay. Well, so we'll we'll have a third public hearing on the matter uh, at our next board meeting, but we'll we'll proceed with the second uh, tonight. That's uh, good. And uh, I, I, I'll, I'll introduce this briefly, as I've, I've done it a couple times before. Right? It, this is an amendment to the subdivision regulation uh, that in uh, subdivisions uh, where where roadways are a part of the development. Uh, would allow those roadways to be built all at once rather than in two stages. Uh, the benefits is it allows more flexible options uh, for development. Uh, it allows the city some more uh, assurance that the road is actually uh, going to be completed. 
and then for partially built out subdivisions that can take many years to build out before the final layer of asphalt uh, is added uh, it provides better driving conditions uh, while, while the subdivision is being developed out and also allows uh, for better drainage uh, during that time period as well. Uh, the main downside uh, to doing one stage construction instead of uh, two stage uh, construction is that uh, it, it, they're, they're, they're probably in, in, in many cases will have to be final repairs made to a final road uh, rather than uh, the, 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 the first part of a road so it could affect the appearance of the road. Uh, as with uh, two-stage construction, uh, you would still have a, a final layer of asphalt uh, to, to lay over the repairs, uh, whereas if the roadway was built in one stage, uh, you, you would uh, have to make all uh, repairs on the actual surface of the road. Uh, so that, that's a major downside. Uh, questions or comments from the members of the board? <coughs> Any questions or comments from the members of the board? Any questions or comments? Seeing none, we'll move into the public comment portion of the public hearing, and we'll hear speakers uh, uh, for and against alternating uh, for a maximum of three minutes apiece for a total for each side of a maximum of 15 minutes. Uh, we will uh, continue to go through that process until either both sides have exhausted their 15 minutes or no one else wishes to speak on the topic. Uh, is there anyone now wishing to speak in favor of the proposed amendment to the subdivision regulation? Anyone wishing to speak in favor of the proposed amendment? Anyone wishing to speak in favor? Seeing no one, is there anyone wishing to speak against the proposed amendment to the subdivision regulation? Good evening again. My name is Adam Turner. Um, what are you all trying to do for us? The subdivision is concerned. Um, uh, some some of them have no trucks allowed. Or uh, what do that do for the sanitation department, the electric department, the or uh, uh, people that have to work on utility poles and whatnot? What do that I said for them? Or uh, the ambulances that or uh, they have to cut siren off once they get to the or. Uh, Services that they want to uh, alert uh, 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 frightened people. What are you trying to change about the subdivision part? Thank you, Mr. Turner. Do we have anyone now wishing to speak in favor of the proposed amendment? Anyone now wishing to speak in favor? Anyone now wishing to speak in favor? Seeing no one, do we have anyone now wishing to speak against the proposed amendment? Anyone now wishing to speak against the proposed amendment? Anyone now wishing to speak against? We have anyone now wishing to speak for or against or indifferent to the proposed amendment? Anyone now wishing to speak for, against, or indifferent to uh, the proposed amendment? Anyone now wishing to speak on the proposed amendment? Seeing no one, that will conclude the public comment portion of the uh, public hearing. And are there any concluding comments by the members of the board? <coughs> any concluding comments by the members of the board? Any concluding comments by the members of the board? Seeing none, we'll move to uh, mayor's business. And I have one item before you tonight, and that is uh, a uh, an RFQ for your uh, consideration. And this is an RFQ uh, that would allow us to receive qualifications uh, from consultants uh, that uh, would uh, uh, potentially help the city establish redevelopment districts and uh, ultimately uh, a redevelopment authority. Uh, this is a process that Mississippi State law uh, provides for uh, to allow communities to target areas uh, for redevelopment. And uh, there are many communities uh, uh, our size uh, and, and larger uh, that, that have implemented redevelopment authorities uh, with some success. Uh, this has been an idea uh, that's been discussed uh, for the past several months. Uh, and uh, I think it's time we move forward uh, on the idea. I know all of you and your wards uh, probably have areas that you would identify uh, as ripe for redevelopment. Uh, and uh, a consultant, hopefully, will be able to guide us through that process where uh, those areas are identified, mapped, uh, designated by the board, and ultimately a redevelopment authority uh, can be created uh, 
to oversee uh, policies that will uh, foster uh, development uh, that might not otherwise uh, come into those redevelopment areas. So. Mr. Mayor, do you have any uh, particular areas or districts in mind within the city uh, with regard to redevelopment districts? That's something I hope will be a part of the process. Uh, I hope the consultant will start us at ground zero and, and he will start uh, in a process with the board where you will take areas uh, in each of your wards uh, and uh, state uh, the, the, why they should be uh, redevelopment areas and then as a board uh, uh, ultimately hopefully there will be some consensus as to what our uh, redevelopment areas are and they can be uh, adopted in the form of uh, redevelopment districts uh, but uh, that that I would hope is a is a board driven process so so, so the answer to my question is you don't have any in mind at this time yeah, there are some areas uh, that, that I could say would be right for redevelopment. Uh, certainly, I think one probably everybody would agree on is uh, the Highway 182 corridor. Um, I think uh, also a, a particular area of interest uh, is the uh, uh, Highway 12 extended corridor uh, immediately adjacent to the university. But I know each of you will have uh, uh, additional areas uh, uh, targeted for redevelopment uh, that, that you would like to present during that process. Uh, and that's, uh, that's the way that process should work. Yeah. E everybody should identify areas that are important to them. Further discussion? Mayor, um, are, court. are there any existing organizations in the area that could also help with this, which is the Golden Triangle Planning and Development District? Yes, uh, and I, I would hope uh, organizations such as uh, GTPDD and others uh, might submit uh, qualifications to be considered. Further discussion, Alderman Sistro. These, these, um, there were some funds budgeted for this, and so it's something that I know is very important to us as we try to move forward as a city and as Mr. Vaughn mentioned earlier, do things that are in the best interest of the city as a whole. Having said that, I move approval of authorizing the advertisement of an RFQ for a consultant in order to establish a redevelopment authority and a redevelopment district in the city of Starkville and other related purposes. Alderman Sistrock has moved to approve of an advertisement for a consultant to assist the city of Starkville with the creation of a redevelopment district and a redevelopment authority and other related purposes as presented. Alderman Sistrock, is that your motion? It is. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Corey. Alderman Sistrock, do you wish to speak on the merits? No. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Saying none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. The measure clearly passes. The next matter on the agenda is the consideration of advertising for letters of interest for the positions on the airport board and the Golden Triangle. Oh, I don't have it on consent on mine. Do you have it on yeah. All right. All right. That carries us to a report by the city engineer on the estimated cost of recommended improvements for Maple Drive and Carp Drive. Mr. Mayor, uh, let me just say one thing while he's turning around. You know, we don't heard a lot about this project. I just want to get to the bottom line. We don't talk Carver Drive and Maple all the year. I just want to get, you know, of course, I think it's need to get to the bottom line what, what the cost is going to be. We don't need to hear about what needs to be done, what, all that kind of stuff. It's just a matter of getting to the, to, to, to the, to the bottom line. Yep. Yes, sir. And Mr. Perkins, I'll try to keep it as brief as possible. Yes, I'll, I'll go through it and feel free, any board member, to stop me uh, as I go. Um, about a month ago, Mr. Wooten with Pepper Wooten Associates came and uh, provided some different options for the board to consider that would satisfy the, uh, the flooding uh, on Maple and the FEMA requirements on Carver Drive. And since then, we've put together some cost estimates based on those um, based on those different options, and uh, we'll go through those here first, starting with Carver Drive. This is kind of the the background info which you uh, which you all saw a couple of, or two meetings ago. Um, the the impacted areas are the shaded areas in blue, and the first recommendation that uh, Mr. Wooten uh, recommended 
is basically uh, installing a paralleling pipe uh, in the channel. Uh, and, and backing up just a second, there's two, two issues right now. There's one issue with this culvert at the intersection, and then there's another issue with the pipe um, in, the, in the channel that has already been installed, both of which are undersized. So uh, one option, uh, option one, is to install a box culvert at this, at this uh, intersection location. Um, I believe it's a five foot wide box culvert and then also install a 60 inch culvert alongside the existing 66 inch um, for <coughs> 300, I believe it's 350 feet that's already installed here. And that, that option, just those two options, is 350,000. If you continue the two pipes, the 66 and the 60, from this location all the way to the end of the original project, um, that is going to be in the $850,000 range. That will also include the improvement at the intersection. Alternate two is um, is is basically the same thing in the channel, putting a, a 60 inch uh, culvert alongside the 66. But instead of putting a box culvert at the intersection, it's putting a double 54 in addition, a double 54 inch pipe in addition to the 60 inch culvert that's already there. So to improve from the end of our uh, improvements back in this intersection, it would be 325. To take again the, the 60 and the 66 to the end would be about 825,000. So really the only difference between one and two is a different method of improvement here at the intersection. The third option is um, similar to the first in that uh, the, the box culvert would be uh, improved at the intersection. However, the channel improvement, instead of being a single pipe, you would put two additional pipes there, which would be 42 inch culvert. So you have a 66 inch now, and you would put uh, two uh, 44 inch culverts alongside of that. Um, again, taking it to this point here is 340,000. To take it to the end uh, of the original project um, is 780,000. And then alternate four is the similar in the channel, but it's just using a 54 inch, a double 54 at the intersection instead of the box culvert. You can see those costs there. And then the last option that Mr. Wood provided was to um, improve the intersection and then remove the pipes along the 350 feet that's already been installed uh, to put in a double 54 at the intersection you can see it's 175 plus channel restoration, and then the box culvert is 225,000. So that's that's the options uh, for Carver um, that will handle the 100-year uh, flow per the flood models. Are there any questions on those before I move? I got on? one yes, question. Sir. I know it's at the conference we had, and it said if the city was to do a lot of their work instead of going outside, they would save a lot of money the cost of that we are, we're just left in Phoenix. That's what it said. If the city would do a lot of rain work, and we would do a lot of work ourselves. Right. Instead of contracting the work outside, we'll save a lot of money. Yeah, you could save some money. It would, it would obviously take longer uh, to do that. We would have to be using the same staff that would also be preparing potholes and that kind of thing. But a lot of the, you know, laying pipe and uh, uh, building box culvert, some limited capacity the city forces could do. Mr. Mayor, I might be recognized. You may. Mr. Mayor, uh, we have had um, a vast amount of discussion on this Carver Drive. So like every time I get a presentation, the, the, the price goes up and up and up. I remember during the budget year, um, I was informed that it would take $250,000 at the most to, to finish the Carver Drive uh, project. Um, it appears to me, uh, as alderman for this ward, uh, that uh, there's a clear intent of um, there not wanting to be any more work done for Carver Drive. Uh, my constituents want this ditch pipe and covered, and uh, that's all we need to do. I mean, uh, it, 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 I'm going to have to shoot straight, straighter with you on it. 
you know, it, it seems like uh, I'm running. Uh, uh, there's a, a lot of impediments with this with this ditch because of the location of the ditch. You know, we, we, we need to get this thing done. Now, the gentleman from Seven just asked the engineer about the city workforce uh, doing the work for this ditch. Now, he, he, he sits there and gives us the response, yeah, we can save money by having our city workforce to, to do it. That's what I have been advocating all along. I don't know where everybody was when I was advocating it. That's how we got the J.L. King, the former West Side Drive ditch done. We had the city workforce. We have people whom I have identified previously that got the work done. We got people who are on the workforce now that can run the excavators, that can run the machinery, that can do this. Yes, when you get these, these contractors, they look at the city as deep pocket. They look at us having big dollars, a lot of money. You know, we got to start running this city just like we should and, and do run our households and those of us who have businesses. We have to conserve the money. We have people who are capable of, of doing this. You know, of all the talk and time we've talked about this carbon drive ditch, the ditch should have been piped and covered by now. You know, all of a sudden, which I am still not convinced as to why the federal authorities and any and all state authorities are involved in this carbon drive ditch. I am still curious right of this date as to why there is some type of state and or federal oversight on this ditch. There is nothing of federal or statewide significance to mandate outside involvement. What in the world does FEMA and the, and, and, and the Mississippi Emergency Management Authority doing meddling in our business in the city of Starkville in a ditch that's over there of uh, that, that has no, no uh, historical uh, interest or significance. What are they doing now, I said, Ms. Spruill explained that uh, some time ago, uh, answered my question and said, well, they were coming in as regard to some, some type of site visit and some follow through. I'm still not convinced that they just, that they just stumbled up on the Carver Drive ditch. What I personally think what happened is, I think that, that there is some effort, in my opinion, for that to be used as a stumbling block to keep from, 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 from piping and covering the ditch. You know, you know we need to, to, to look out for these citizens over on the Carver Drive area. We need to promote the health, safety, and welfare. It seems like there's not any interest in this, you know. A, you, know, the, the, you know, the majority of this board can promote an $8 million bond issue for a police station, but yet we can't spend $250,000 to, to, to pipe and cover the ditch. Now, that's a shame. Now, come election time, everybody want to come over in Ward 6 and knock on the door, whoever can, can run for a citywide office, want to come over there and ask my constituents to vote for them. But yet we can't pipe and cover the ditch that needs to be covered and it should have been covered some time ago. We need to identify the funds to cover the ditch. We want to ask the people standing from the polling place for them to vote for an $8 million police station. But you can't cover a ditch. The people have gotten so tired, they have lost their faith in this government. They have lost their faith in this board. They do not want to continue to come up here because they feel that they are being neglected and left out. We have to be an advocate for all of the people. We have to make sure that, that we make equitable decisions. And, and we're going to talk about this equity a little bit more when some other matters are going to come up in this board meeting tonight. We have to be fair and treat people right. Now, you know, and I guess we keep talking about the car of drive. It's going to be $2 million next, next month. Next, I guess it's going to be $3 million. Every time I look at it, it's some type of cost. We got to have an engineer. We got to have H and H. All these, these like like the former Judge Mills, all these fancy names. I mean, all that stuff is not needed. Let, let, let's get the, the workforce. We we pay the workforce, yeah, you know, to, to get these things done. It may be some delay in doing the potholes and doing the other matters, 
But it all comes about uh, being a, an effective manager, being an effective administrator. If, you, if a person's an effective manager, an effective administrator, an effective CEO, we can get these things done. We have sufficient staff to run this city. It's just a matter of, of, of the city being run right and, and these things being prioritized. You know, it's, it's ridiculous when we have to talk about these same issues year in and year out. But some areas, you know, that, I mean, just a matter of making a motion and second, then it happens. You know, but, but, you know, I am not going to give up the fight on this ditch for these people. You know, if you get tired of me talking about it, so be it. I mean, the people in Ward 6 deserve some, some better citywide representation from all of the people who are involved in the citywide representation. We need some leadership from all segments of the city to help everybody. It's just like I said some meetings ago, I, you know, I'm, I'm in support of things for the betterment of the city regardless of what ward it falls in. I told the gentleman from one, I told the gentleman from three, I'll tell the gentleman from the other ward, I'm going to support it. Let's find a way to make this happen. We live in this city together. The only way we can look out for the common good of this community is we got to look out for the community as a whole. And we're not doing this as evidenced by how we're, how, how we're just dragging our feet on the Carver Drive ditch. And this conversation is not intended just that you, uh, Mr. Kemp. I'm just talking general. Because my constituents are, are deeply and profoundly frustrated. You know, they pay taxes in this city. You know, they pay taxes, but they're not getting the, the real benefit of their tax dollars. You know, and I know I'm in the minority on a lot of these votes, but, but you know, I'm an elected alderman, and I'm the voice for the people. I'm going to be the voice as long as I am here. That's just the bottom line. Whether you want to hear it or not, that's the bottom line. We need to title and, and, and pipe and close the ditch. We got gentlemen, I'm going to call their names. We got, you know, we got Mr. Stevenson. He's still with us, Mr. Mr. Yes, sir, yes. Yeah, he, I mean, he ran the excavator. That's what I learned about when the excavator was. He ran the excavator to, to, to close the ditch over the King Park. You got Mr. Jimmy Ellis. You got Mr. Arthur Johnson. Those guys are veterans. They are experienced. They are knowledgeable. And hopefully they won't leave anytime soon because they are great assets to the city. And we probably got others who can get the job. But those guys uh, ran that equipment and, and closed that ditch over there on the, on the West Side Drive a park, now the King Park, we haven't had the first problem with that ditch over there that I'm aware of. It was the same type pipe thereabout that was, that was in that ditch that's over in the Carver Drive ditch. But we seem not to get out of the starting gate on the, on the Carver Drive ditch. So I'm, I'm, I'm respectfully requesting, uh, starting at the mayor's office and this board, to please let's find some type of way to bring just closure to the Carver Drive Ditch. We have been talking about the Carver Drive Ditch this whole term. I'm asking for some relief. I'm pleading for some relief. I'm going to help the gentleman from Ward 3. Yeah. We got a problem down in South Montgomery. I've been advocating. I'm, I'm going to vote for it. Why? Because we need some relief down on South Montgomery. We need it. Yeah, they, we need some, some, some other access road. I'm going to support it. Even though I don't represent that ward, I am going to support it. And why I'm going to support it? Because it's the right thing to do. I'm going to support whatever we need from Ward 5, all these wards. I'm going to promote the, the best interest, health, and welfare of this city. And I want everybody who's in the, this governing body to let's do the same thing for the Carver Drive Ditch. So, as I told you before, let's make some progress. If we keep making progress, we can get to the finish line. And it's like... Get ready to close here. I got all the easement. I spent my time getting the easement. I guess no one thought I was going to accomplish that task. I went out there and got the easement. You know, I did that in my capacity as an alderman. The staff did not have to go out there and get the easements for the ditch. We did not have to get uh, no consultant to get the easement. I got some easement that's from some people that some people thought were not going to happen. Some people told me, said, look, Alderman Perkins, look, I gave this easement up because of you, your commitment. And I didn't mind devoting my time because I want to do what I can for this city. So, you know, when my legacy is in, is everything is 
is said and done, you're going to know that Alderman Perkins fought for Ward 6 and for this city of Starkville, Mississippi. I'm not here for no show, I'm not here for no form, and I'm not here for no fashion. And I'm certainly not here for my health. I'm up here trying to make a real difference in the city of Stark. I'm a native Starkvillian. I'm concerned about this city. If y'all understand what a native Starkville is, I was born and raised here. I'm a country boy, and I worked hard all my life. I'm going to work hard for the taxpayers. I'm going to watch out for the taxpayers' money. I'm going to make sure the taxpayer dollars are well spent. So I'm just hoping and pleading that we can get this dish done. Because I'm, I'm tired of talking about it. I want, it, I want it to happen, and that's why next Tuesday night, I want to hear this same stuff next Tuesday night. I want, I want to see some action. We need to have some implementation. How are we going to pay for these projects? we got to have some money, but, but, but we got money set aside for the Carver Drive ditch already, carry over from the last budget year. But now we got this alleged impediment saying we can't do anything because this is what the federal and the state people want. But we can make anything happen that we want to happen. We can always find a way. We do it for whatever we want. We can do it for the Carver Drive ditch. So I'm asking the mayor respectfully, not talking down to anybody. I just feel very fervent about this. I'm not demeaning anybody. I respect all my colleagues at this table on this. If I come across too strong, I mean, no offense to you. But I want us to work together as a team, work together as a board, and, I'm, and, and you can call my hand whenever you want to because I'm, I'm going to be there with you. I'm, I'm going to support it because you, and I'm, I'm going I'm to support projects that need supporting, that I think need supporting. And some of I don't, you know, then, then just we'll discuss it and talk about it. So with all that being said, Mr. Mayor, we need your leadership on this. We need your support. With your support, Mayor, you know, this thing can happen. You know, we may not can do it all this one time, but, but we need it. And like Alderman Vaughn learned from this, uh, this seminar, let's put this city staff out there. We, we got the people who can do it. It's just a matter of putting them out there. You know, it's, it's a winner. You know, it's, it's, it's just put them out there. So, Mr. Mayor, with, with that being said, I, I just want, I didn't mean to take up so much of your time, but that had to be said. But we need your leadership. You're the CEO of here on a day-to-day -day basis. You're in charge of the day-to-day -day operations by statute. And we need your leadership, Mr. Mayor. You got a significant vote. I hate to remind you, but you got, you got the votes from War 6. They were, the, they were the pivotal votes that put you in, in the House uh, and, uh, across the hall there, put you, put you in the mayor's office. They, War 6 were the key votes. They were the swing votes. And we need some leadership. We need your help. We need your support. We need, we need this project moving. And now we got into this time of the year when we want to move. Uh, uh, you know, anytime we get a little water in the ditch, we can't do any work over there. You know, and, and, and nothing was done this summer, and, and this term is almost over with. We, got about, we only got a year and we got a, uh, a year and a half, maybe about, about, uh, about eight, a year and, and uh, seven months left on this term. And we hadn't done anything on the car drive ditch, but just talked about it. But yet we can get our things done throughout other parts of the city. So, Mr. Mayor, with that being said, I'm hopeful that, that we will work together as a team and, and, get, and make this ditch happen. And, uh, and so there will be some progress. Thank you. Further discussion? The members of the board. Alderman Corey. Um, I think Alderman Vaughn made an interesting point about the potential for doing this in-house. Um, the cost estimates that you've provided, those are if we contract it out, is that correct? Correct. Correct. <clears throat> is there any way you could provide us with a set of estimates of what it would cost if we were to move it in-house? Uh, and what kind of impact that would have? And, and concurrently with that cost estimate, what what we're giving up because if you obviously if you task them with doing this, you're taking them away from something else. Right. Right. Alderman Ball. Especially the parts that you all can do, you know. Right. You, 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 you can contract that part out, but the part that we can do, you know. Mr. Mayor, you, you and I was talking about it on the way home, you know, where they took this whole city and just turned it all the way around. But most of the help came from, from the city department. It came from within. I mean, I, I told Mr. Mayor about Dumas. We'd like to see no green roof. We've seen a whole green roof. I mean, beautiful. <clears throat> I mean, but it came from the city staff. They did a lot of their work. I'll be happy to provide those estimates. I think what you'll find uh, a significant portion of that is going to be materials, uh, but you will save some cost of labor um, and equipment usage. Usage <coughs> is, that, is what, obviously what we have in the house. But uh, I'll certainly try to put that together and try to um, project out what implications that would have on other city services that the street department provides. That'll be a difficult 
thing to project, but I'll, I'll do my best. Um, from the board's perspective, uh, to continue with the LOMAR process, uh, we'll need some type of direction on which solution is chosen. So we can submit that to FEMA for their approval before we actually do the construction. So uh, we will need some guidance in order to proceed um, with that application to FEMA um, for whatever whatever method the board uses. So that'll be something to consider. Further discussion before moving on to Maple. Any further discussion? <coughs> One, one more question. Did, did he, he said the present pipes were there. He said they were over 30 years. He said it, that could be, what, 30 years or something? It was, one estimate was 100 years, right? Right. Who's going to live 100 years? Who said we were going to be 100 years? We're going to be 20 more years. But, you, you know, that's what I'm saying. we got to look at that, too. We hadn't had, they hadn't had any problem about the pipe since they've been there. Well, it's, it's based on a 100-year storm event, right. which is what FEMA requires you to, to study. That's their... That's their threshold that you have to look at when you're sizing pipes in a floodplain. So that's the reason why the 100 was chosen. Any other questions? Any further questions or comments before proceeding to make? All right. Um, and all this in your packet, this is just a recap of all the different options. Let's move on to Maple Drive. Of course, this is the uh, similar uh, existing conditions based on the flood model. The turquoise shading is a 25-year storm event which floods, and the blue is a 100-year storm event flooding. We uh, basically have a total of six options, but really it's uh, two alternates. The first alternate is to um, basically, the alignment would come along the back, the backyards of, of the lots facing Maple Drive, come under Stark Road, and then discharges into a drainage easement um, on the west side of Stark Road, which ties into the uh, drainage system that runs through Upper Crossing area. This alternate, though, does have three options within it. Um, we'll have an open channel section in this red shaded area here. And there are different treatment uh, methods you can, you can select with that. Uh, one was a concrete channel, just a concrete bottom and sides. So you've seen those around town in several locations. Gavian basket is a relatively new uh, treatment. It's more of a natural um, with a stone. It's almost stair step up the sides. It's obviously the mo more expensive of the three options. And then the last option is to do just an earthen channel, which is a natural uh, side slopes. Of course, they would need to be stabilized with some type of permanent erosion protection to prevent uh, future degradation of the channel. Of course, that is the cheapest option, as you can see. But that, uh, from the, the blue uh, alignment here, is, would be all be closed conduit, would be piping. And we discussed during the last meeting that this area would have to be piped because of the, the topography of that area um, doesn't allow for an open channel section to continue through here. Otherwise, it would take up a significant amount of, of personal property, especially from these lots here. Um, this is a pretty good sized pipe. I want to say it's a 60 inch pipe. I don't have that number right in front of me. Uh, and it's either a 54 or a 60 inch pipe. So that's um, alternate one. And alternate one is going to be the mo more affordable of the two. Alternate two uh, does turn and goes um, into Maple Drive. One of the reasons why this option is more expensive is because you're getting into a lot of disturbance in Maple Drive, a lot of driveways. You're going to have a lot of other utility conflicts, relocations. And you also have to use larger pipes um, through here because it's a flatter slope. The same three options are for this uh, open channel um, portion back here. Uh, but in general, you're looking at about $150,000 increase from alternate one to alternate two uh, from this alignment versus the alignment coming in the back. 
So that's the that's the options for Maple. Um, and that's a recap. Be happy to answer any questions on that. Questions or comments from the members of the board? Any questions or comments from the members of the board? Mr. Mayor, I'd like to see, uh, I'd like for, for the mayor, to, uh, if you would, Mr. Mayor, to give us some leadership on how we can get these two projects moving. I mean, um, I've heard from the engineer I've, tonight, I'd like to see, uh, hear what you have to say, Mayor, about, about what, what, how do you think we should proceed on carbon maple with these two projects, Mr. Mayor? That's a, that's a timely question uh, because one of the things you notice uh, with, with these two projects uh, is, uh, they both have become uh, very large uh, e expenditures. Uh, and uh, there is one additional project uh, that this board has already committed to studying uh, later this year that probably will come in as a high dollar expenditure as well. And that is an existing pipe uh, in between uh, the Colonial Hill subdivision and Timber Cove uh, that the city engineers informed us uh, is failing. Uh, as the in conversations I've had with the city engineer, uh, uh, I, he, he has told me that the figures we can expect in cost estimates for that project uh, are to be more along the lines of, of these figures uh, than some of the other drainage projects that we have. Now, in addition to those two projects and, and that other potential project uh, that, that has yet to be uh, studied and, and, and costed, uh, we have approximately a million dollars in other drainage projects uh, that are identified. Uh, and right now, the projections for funding uh, in, in that 10-year uh, drainage project plan uh, is, is already short before you add the additional costs. Uh, it is clear to me uh, that we are going to have to revisit our strategy for doing these projects. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to, as quickly as possible, work with our staff on looking at uh, all potential cost-saving measures with these projects, as well as potential previously unidentified ways to fund these projects. Because what is certain right now, uh, with a project list that will now be millions of dollars behind uh, funding that is projected to be there for it, uh, uh, we, 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 we cannot continue on that course. Uh, I, th I think one of the things that we're seeing is we're seeing more issues uh, related to storm drainage than we've seen before. Uh, this, this city has become a much more developed city over the last quarter of century. Uh, we have much more uh, impervious surface in the city uh, and all of that water that is not going into the ground has to go somewhere. Uh, so I, I think the time has come for us as a city uh, to figure out comprehensively uh, how we're going to address drainage issues that we have all over the city. Uh, because the reality is everybody uh, that lives in a home, an apartment, uh, has a facility that is contributing to drainage issues because that, that water runs off into streams uh, and somewhere uh, causes an issue. Uh, everybody that shops in stores uh, it participates uh, in, in an economy uh, that's buildings uh, cause runoff that goes into streams uh, and collectively uh, creates the problem uh, where at, at certain points you have issue with drainage. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, uh, and hopefully I'll have this ready by the end of the year, uh, I'm going to uh, work to come up with a strategy uh, for how we can address the issues and uh, hopefully how we can potentially fund the issues. Uh, and uh, hopefully uh, we'll, we'll come out of that process uh, with an idea of how we're we're going to manage our, our our storm water issues in this community in the future. Further discussion. Uh, Edward, can the same question about Maple Drive be addressed as well regarding in kind labor and in house labor? And I realize we may not even have the man hours to do all these in house, but just again to get 
I guess, and more options and, and costs and what we can do, I think that would be helpful. Okay, sure. Further discussion? Do we have any further discussion? Any further discussion? All right, seeing none, thank you, Mr. Kent. Well, actually, you can stay seated because we'll have a uh, presentation of the results of the traffic study. No. Yeah. No, it no. didn't go on consent. That's right. <coughs> Mayor Board, we were evaluating the intersection of Montgomery and Garrett with our signal engineers, and um, they brought it to our attention if we had done a signal warrant analysis on that intersection, they posed some um, concerns about the, the hill on the north side of that intersection, and if and potentially if a signal analysis had not been done and was not warranted and a collision occurred at that location, the city could potentially be liable, um, or at least asked to be liable for that uh, accident. So um, after discussing it with the mayor, he, uh, he requested that we, we do a traffic analysis of the <coughs> intersection, as well as the, um, the other end of the new Garrett Road extension, <coughs> which is on Old West Point Road, and you'll find in your packet a result, uh, uh, results from the, both of those studies. One thing that I failed to leave out of your packet, however, is a chart, and you'll see I let, put this at each of your tables this evening. I guess I'm more of a graphics type person. It's easier for me to understand. But the blue line on the chart is the peak for a, a four hour warrant for a peak hour for four hours. And then the peak hour is the green line. And these are the, these are the parameters that um, the manual for uniform traffic control devices sets forth for uh, this type of an intersection. And as you can see, right over here on the edge are the results from that study. So we're pretty, you know, we're 100, 100 vehicles uh, below per hour on the, on the four hour, and we're probably two to 300 below the peak hour on warranting a signal um, at this time. Now, uh, as included in the report is, this is a relatively new roadway. Traffic patterns may not have fully developed at this time. So if it comes up in the future, we want to restudy it. The, the, it, may, it may warrant it in a future, at a future time once the, the roadway is more utilized. But at this time, it's not warranted according to those uh, published guidelines. So um, that, that is the results of the study. And, Right now, the board has authorized us to install a signal. So your recommendation would be a, uh, a four-way stop on North, uh, North Montgomery? Well, the, the study does um, suggest that a four-way stop uh, could be warranted. It's right at the, at the line. Uh, you could really go either way with that, or you could continue with the, the, the condition that it is right now with a two-way stop on the minor approach would be, which would be Garrett and leave the major roadway which would be more North Montgomery unimpeded. Um, I think that's you know a decision for the board. I think you could you know you could go either way with it really. And what about on the old West Point Rose? Um, I can't remember on that one. I think that the traffic patterns are very similar on both <coughs> of those. So um, actually there you have more north and southbound traffic on Old West Point than you do on Montgomery. So the, the four-way stop is probably not um, probably not as warranted there as it would be in the, in the, on Garrett. On, on Montgomery, yeah. Uh, Mr. Kent, we only have board action just for the light at uh, Montgomery and, and Garrett. Uh, just, just, that's all on the yes, light. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's correct. Mr. Mayor, might be recognized. You may. Mr. Mayor, I move that, that we rescind the prior board action that uh, authorized the uh, installation of a traffic light at the intersection of um, North Montgomery and um, Garrett Road based upon the intersection traffic study that was done. Alderman Perkins has made a motion to rescind the motion previously adopted by this board 
to place a traffic light at the intersection of Garrard and North Montgomery uh, due to the findings of a study that was recently done. Alderman Perkins, is that your motion? Yes, sir. Do I hear a second? Second. The motion has been seconded by Alderman Sistrock. Alderman Perkins, do you care to speak on the No, matter? sir. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Seeing that all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Measure clearly passes. The next matter on the agenda <coughs> is the consideration of designating City <coughs> Building Inspector Bob Hall as the ADA coordinator. It's not it's not I need a copy with the highlights. So. Okay. Uh, next matter on the agenda is the consideration of calling for a public hearing on amending the City of Starville Code of Ordinances, Chapter 30, Business Article 11. Uh, discussion. Alderman Dennis. I asked for this uh, item to be placed on the agenda, and I asked for the specific changes that are shown in the packet. Um, and the one and only reason that I did this was not to restrict, but to actually increase one's ability to... Uh, to sell goods in the city, and it relates specifically to food carts and uh, food trucks. And as it stands right now, we restrict one's ability to sell food uh, within a truck or within a cart within our public right-of-way. And we have a couple of instances across town where they're doing so on private property where they're granted access. But I think anyone who, who travels and anyone who watches enough TV probably recognizes that uh, you're more urban, you're growing, and your more progressive cities are encouraging food carts, uh, and they're becoming more and more popular as urban centers and growth centers develop. And so what this peddler's ordinance does is modifies uh, a couple of things. One is 30-31. Uh, it strikes the current language which restricts any peddling on Sunday, and it opens that up so that only within residential neighborhoods is it unlawful to sell uh, after sunset and to 9 o'clock. Um, whereas before you couldn't do that anywhere or anywhere on Sunday. It opens it up now to where within commercial vending areas you can do that. Um, and then the biggest substantial change is, is under 30-32 where once we restricted any peddling activity within our public right of way, we now open this up to allow food vendors and peddling, and not just food vendors, let me pull that back, but, but can allow individuals to sell within a designated parking space. And that's important to know. We're not encouraging individuals to park on roadways where there is no parking, but their carts and their trucks have to fit within defined right of way, or within a defined parking place, and they have to be lawfully parked. But within those areas, they can uh, sell food if they receive a peddler's permit, and as you see, on page uh, four of six, we've added number seven, that not only do they have to follow our local peddler's um, permit, which we're actually reading here, but they also have to meet, obviously, state and other local activities related to food sale, et cetera. So this by no means restricts any of our current laws. It actually opens it up so that we can encourage the growth of uh, a little more organic food development that is actually being asked for and pushed for within our local restaurant scene. So those are the changes. And I'll go ahead and move uh, approval calling for the public hearing of this ordinance as written on the agenda. Alderman Dumas has moved to call for a public hearing on amending the City of Starville Code of Ordinances, Chapter 30, Business Article 11, Peddlers, Section 30-26, at sec. Alderman Dumas, as presented, Alderman Dumas, is that your motion? It is. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Corey. Alderman Dumas, you wish to pick on the merits? No. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Saying none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please signify by saying nay measure clearly passes. The next matter on the agenda is the request for the request for consideration of bids for the Louisville Street widening project accepting the low bidder contingent upon MDOT uh, concurrence and authorization for the mayor to execute contract. Mr. Kemp. Thank you, Mayor. In your packet, I put this at your table as well. We had bid openings yesterday morning, so I apologize for putting it at your table last minute. 
Um, we did have three bids, uh, the lowest coming from Gregory Construction in the amount of uh, just under $1.7 million. Um, we've looked at the bids, we've analyzed them, and we feel like they're a good, it's a good bid. Um, the justification on why the bids were higher than expected is included in your packet as well. The, um, the total project budget for this is about $1.8 million, and that includes not only construction, but other things such as construction engineering, inspections, text, testing, and that type of thing. Um, so all that being said, our construction uh, estimate was about $1.5 million. So um, we had a, a $75,000 contingency built into the es estimate, so when you remove that, the city is still going to need to come up with about $106,000 in order uh, for this project to proceed. Um, something to note on this is that um, this project is um, uh, our STIP project uh, that we've alluded to so many times before. It's an 80-20 match from the uh, using federal highway dollars and 20% match from local. So we will be putting in um, approximately three to four hundred thousand dollars to get a 1.9 million dollar project essentially um, so um, that's the the, um, the decision for the board I like I said I do think it's a good bid I, I don't think see anything wrong with it I don't have any hesitation to recommend <coughs> approval I think the only thing to um, to work out is the funding coming up with the additional funding and as I alluded to in the packet um, you know, there's a couple options. Uh, you can look at um, capital improvement uh, funding. Um, you can try to see if there's any leftover funding from projects that underran. I don't know what those are right now um, because all of our projects aren't complete. But those are just some of the options. Of course, there's probably other funding sources as well. Questions, you got? Alderman I, I have. I have one. Um, I think this is a very important project for us, and I would hate for us to lose those STIP funds, and it's too late to transfer those to some other project. So it's a commitment to this project, or, or we lose those right. dollars. Um, this is the sort of situation that arises that would be an appropriate use, in my mind, of, of ending fund balance from prior year. Um, it's, it's not typically something you want to budget to use, but this is an unexpected um, variance in the in the uh, bids, and and I think this is a very appropriate use. I would say first, you look to those overruns or, or rather underruns in other projects, and then lastly to the ending fund balance for funding this hundred and six thousand dollars, and I would like to make a motion that. Um, we approve Gregory Construction as the lowest and best bidder for the Louisville Street widening project, pending concurrence of the bids by MDOT, and authorization um, for an additional $106,610.85 um, coming first from project <coughs> underruns and second from ending fund balance and also to authorize the mayor to execute a construction contract with the lowest and best bidder pending MDOT and the city attorney's approval of the contract. Could you state that number one more time, 106? 106.610.85. The motion from Alderman Sistrock is to approve of Gregory at construction as the lowest and best bidder for the Louisville Street widening project pending concurrence of the bids by MDOT and authorization for an additional $106,610.85 coming first from underruns and existing projects and uh, uh, then from the ending fund balance uh, be provided to the project budget and authorization for the mayor to execute a construction contract with the lowest and best bidder pending MDOT and the city attorney's approval of the contract. Alderman Sistrunk, is that your motion? I think so. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Parker. Alderman Sistrunk, do you wish to speak on the merits? Any discussion? Mr. Mayor. Yes. I'd like to ask the Vice Mayor, you, uh, in your motion you mentioned underruns from existing projects. Is this taking in my Carver Drive money? No, it's not touching your Carver Drive money. Okay. These <laughs> 
right. Just want to be sure. <laughs> further discussion? Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. The measure clearly passes. That will carry us to a request to approve the hire of Moultrie, Lacey, and Kyle Monroe to fill vacant positions of certified police officers. Mr. Mayor, uh, I'm going to move approval. But before I move that, I, you know, I noticed in the past, and say it respectfully, you know, we hear the talk that a lot of our police officers leave for more pay. And I noticed that one of the officers is coming back. So I just wanted to point that out. So obviously, that particular officer is probably not leaving, I would think, not because of of a pay issue. So, you know, it's, it's often said that sometimes we lose officers because of, of, of pay. But I noticed that one of the two certified officers is one who worked for the city from 2000 to 2008. Uh, but, but I wanted to make this statement. What that being said, Mr. Mayor, I'm going to move approval of, uh, of this matter here. Let me, let me see your agenda here real quick. Um, I'm going to move approval of these two, um, to hire these two, uh, Motri Lacey, and Cal Lee to fill the vacant position for certifi certified police officers based upon the staff recommendation with the salary stated and subject to the one year probationary period for both of these officers, Mr. Mayor. Alderman Perkins has made a motion to approve the hire of Moultrie Lacey and Kyle Monroe is the name I've no, got. Mayor, it is Kyle Lee. Kyle Lee. I'm sorry, did I say it wrong? No, you got no, it right. You got it right. Okay. Okay. It's moved uh, it's approval of the hire of Ky uh, of Moultrie Lacey and Kyle Lee to fill vacant positions of certified uh, police officers uh, with the salaries as presented, subject to a one-year probationary period. So, Alderman Perkins, is that your motion? Yes, sir. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Dumas. Alderman Perkins, do you wish to speak on the merits? No, sir. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Saying none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh -huh. All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. The measure clearly passes. The next matter on the agenda is the request to promote Carol Pritchard to fill the vacant position of staff support technician level two in the police department. Discuss approval. Motion has been made by Alderman Dumas to approve to, uh, of the promotion of Carol Pritchard to fill the vacant position of staff support technician level two in the police department as presented. Alderman Dumas, is that your motion? It is. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Corey. Alderman Dumas, do you wish to speak on the merits? No. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Mr. Mayor. None? Uh, Alderman no. Perkins. Mr. Mayor, let, let, let me say briefly, and I'm not trying to, um, to hold this thing up, but let, let me say this very carefully. You know, it is very important that we as a governing body treat employees fairly and equally. It is my recollection, Mr. Mayor and Ms. Spruill, that when we advertised for this or gave authority to advertise for this position, that we gave authority to advertise for, uh, I think, a grade eight and step one, about $24,000. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Now. Um, and that was like twenty-four some thousand dollars. Now, in reading this um, this staff recommendation sheet, now, and, and of course, if I'm wrong, I want to be corrected. But I do not recall our authorizing uh, an additional four thousand dollars. I don't have the sheet before me, but this is my recollection upon the completion of, of some certification course, because I don't I don't recall any other uh, dispatcher for the police department being able to get this. $4,000, and this is just a built-in uh, pay raise uh, to help elevate this salary. And this not, no, uh, I'm not talking at the chief here, but just, just from city policy overall. You, you know, we have to be real careful with this. You know, I mean, uh, there may be people in other departments wants this built-in money here. See, what's happening here, if we pass this motion as it is, if, if you read this information carefully, and closely and precisely, uh, it allows for a $4,000 extra pay increase once this person finishes 40 hours of certification. Now, I do not recall our giving any other dispatcher that. You know, you know, um, what, if you don't be careful, you'll set yourself up with a lot of grievances, and you, 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 you eventually, if, if some. You have someone who grieves these things to come up here and grieve this, and you'll find yourself in litigation quickly. 
you know, you have to treat employees who are similarly situated similarly. I'm not aware of any other dispatcher who has completed a certification course, and I, again, I stand to be corrected, and they got the, uh, that extra pay. And I think um, if, and Ms. Pro, have you seen this sheet? Are you following me? Mr. Perkins, there's a misunderstanding on your part. I think I can address if you give me the opportunity. Oh, I will. Let me come over here and ask you a question real quick. Uh, let me see it. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, Chief. Lynn, uh, now here, did we, what do we advertise for this position? Uh, did, and I'm going to hear the chief later. Uh, <coughs> did we advertise for a grade eight step one on, on this position for 24 some thousand dollars? Uh, I remember the staff support technician. Uh, on I'm, the I'm talking what we advertise, not what the one, what to, what the one, the outgoing one. Made. I'm talking what did we have authorized to be, for for uh, to be advertised? What was the what was the grade and what was the step? Do I, you know that? I apologize, I do not. Mr. Boyd, do you know? On oh, Perkins, I don't have it in front of me, but as best I recall, it was stated that it was a grade eight, and that the step one rate was specified, but. Alden Perkins, we have other situations where we have advertised positions. No, 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 no that's not my question. I'm, I'm, I'm not interested in no other. I'm talking about what the board authorized. We speak through our minutes. Okay, that's, Ms. Brewer, don't, don't depart just yet. Come on back up here. I have the answer. Oh, okay, yes, sir, Chief. And one more question, Ms. Brewer. Now, it says that, and I'm just only asking, now, y'all correct me if I'm wrong now. It says that this person will receive $4,000 annual pay adjustment that was approved and given. The, when we, uh, gave authorization to advertise for this position. Did our motion say that this person, whomever is hired, will get a grade eight step one or whatever the step was plus four thousand dollars? Was that condition in that in that motion? That was, that was not in the motion. Well, why is this before us in, like this? You know, in other words, my question. And I'm not trying to put y'all on the spot. You know, and and, and I'm just on the one on. But but what I want to see happen is when we approve something, that's how it should come back to us. Because if, if no one sits here and questions these things, then it just gets passed and, you know, and like, you know, we need to make sure that, and no, I'm not fussing anybody, we just need to make sure we, we you know, we, we're doing what the board authorized. I'm not trying to take the time unnecessarily, but it, I guess it's just my, my, my level of experience here with these things. I just look at them closely. And not to say no one else does not, but, you know, but whatever we advertise for, that's what needs to come here. Because see here, this this person, and this person making do this forty hours in a daytime or or two days or whatever. But we didn't authorize that, to my recollection. And you know, and, and if you set this type of uh, pay schedule up for this employee, regardless of what we have done in the past, then you know you're not treating other department heads for uh, and, and employees fairly. Uh, and I'm sorry, Chief. Go ahead. Uh, the confusion seems to be this: this is a staff support technician position which is not a dispatch position. Dispatch is one of the requirements. They have to be certified as a dispatcher. This is a position that years ago was elevated to a specialized uh, slot because it was formerly a secretary's position. Yes, sir, Chief. The $4,000 increase uh, was approved by the board to the staff support technicians when officer, uh, excuse me, Miss Tammy Tyndall Carlisle was hired. And Miss Sheridan and Miss Carlisle got these $4,000 adjustments, as y'all might remember earlier uh, this budget year. That was when it was raised to these positions. So this is a staff support technician that requires much uh, cross training, and some of that is dispatch, of which there is a 40 hour requirement. But that was approved by the board for that support technician position at the time, as was Ms. Sheridan's. So the precedent was set there for this position, and it was approved by the board then. And similarly to Ms. Tyndall, when she, Carlisle, when she was hired, uh, this person will not get that $4,000 <coughs> raise until they have completed all aspects of cross-training, which is not merely 40 hours of dispatch training. It's also cross-trained in preparation of narcotics cases, detective cases, as well as cross-trained in Ms. Sheridan's capacity in payroll, budget, and accounts receivable. Formerly, this SST position that we're hiring tonight was two positions 
filled by two women, one the narcotic secretary and one the secretary position for detectives. We combine those to have one position. So actually this is a saving of money and an increase over the original positions that two women held. And that's what we're doing now is following the precedent that was set earlier this year when Ms. Sheridan and Ms. Carlisle got those raises approved by the board. Mr. Miller, let me ask the chief a few questions. Chief, uh, just, just respectful and unnecessarily here, but when the board approved you to advertise or the personal officer or the appropriate staff to advertise for this position and, and this my specific question, is there anything in, in that board order as approved by the board, irregardless of any past history, is there anything in that order that allows or mandates that, that this hire, whoever it may be, will get an additional $4,000 upon completing the certification? Was that in there? Absolutely. That was there at the time. As I presented it to the board and it was approved, that was my recommendation. How, how it's worded in the minutes, I, I don't know. Uh, uh, okay, in other words, when we, when we approve this, just with, I guess it's probably some here recently. Was that part of the, yes, of, of the minutes? Yes, Ms. Carlisle, as you might recall, moved from the mayor's office to the police department. That was when it was done. Now, the exact date of that, I don't recall. Mr. Boyd, do you, do you, uh, you I just want to be clear so I make sure I know what we're do, doing in the city. Do you, my question is, uh, is, do you recall it being in the minutes that once we gave authority to advertise for this position, were there any specific language in there that, in regards of any history, but when we, you know, normally when we give authorization to advertise for a grade and certain step and it has a certain salary, do you recall any language that says that this, with that condition, that this person gets an additional $4,000? Do you or do you not? Alderman Perkins, that specific $4,000 was not specified uh, in that action. Right. That action, just as others that have been approved by the board, states the, the grade and it states the step one salary. On many other occasions, when we have come back with a recommendation to hire, the recommendation to hire has been in that grade, but at a higher step, not necessarily hiring at the step one rate, but at a, at a higher step. But the $4,000 specifically was not spelled out per se. It was, it was stated that the job would be in grade eight. Right. And thank you, Ms. And Mayor, one last thing. Ms. Poole, will you give me a copy of that minutes before I will depart tonight? Yes, sir. Thank you. Did, did, did Ms. Carlisle uh, complete all of her cross training? She did, and she was given the adjustment. So we're following the so same was her adjustment, adjustment that was set. When there. she left, she was at 31. Correct. Oh. No, actually, after advancing to 31, she had got a three percent raise up to 32, actually, right. which is not included in this. Sure. sure. But, but we're not starting them off after her adjustment and no, then sure. another 4,000. We're no, backing sure. it up, backing that 4,000 out. Correct. That's correct. Okay. That's further discussion. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Saying none. Uh, well, let's take this one by show of hands. All those in favor of Alderman Dumas's motion, please signify by raising your hand. All those opposed, please signify by raising your hand. By a measure of four in favor and two against, uh, and two against this, this passes. The Next matter on the agenda is the request to issue a notice to proceed to per Perma Corporation, the submitter of the lowest quote to replace a defective plug valve at the wastewater treatment plant. Mayor, seeing as I have a family member placing this bid, I'd like to refuse myself. We will give Alderman Corey a moment to exit the room. Move approval. Motion has been made by Alderman Dumas to approve of a note of the issuance of a notice to proceed to Perma Corporation, the submitter of the lowest quote to replace the defective plug valve at the wastewater treatment plant. Alderman Dumas, is that your motion? It is. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Parker. Alderman Dumas, do you wish to speak on the merit? No. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Saying none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. 
measure clearly passes. And that exhausts the open session portion of our agenda. We do have uh, matters pending for potential executive session discussion. A motion is going to close the session. A motion has been made by Alderman Dumas to move into a closed session to, just to determine whether there is a need to move into executive session. Alderman Dumas, is that your motion? It is. Do I hear a second? Second. The motion has been seconded by Alderman Parker. Alderman Dumas, do you wish to speak on the merits? No. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Measure clearly passes. Mayor, take a recess. And without objection, we're going to take a brief recess. Any objection? Any objection? Seeing none, we'll stand in recess and we'll meet in just a turn. Yes, sir.